we can go out, we turn over Leeds away, or we turn over Liverpool. And so, well, how the hell are they doing that? Our financial structure is not as big. Our overheads in wages is nowhere near as big. We don't have as many star names, even though we do have a lot of star names now. But we go over, a nice little bunch. We t stay the night at the hotel, turn somebody over, come back again. That's great. A building starts in the footings. You dig your, you dig your footings out, you put your concrete in, and then you start building the bricks up. And, and from now, like, up to the game, that's what we do. We put layer on layer and layer, and when it comes to it, it's like... Phew. Fashionu, he's brave, Walker's down, Cockrell's on the ball, Gibson goes in! They have more detractors than any team in the land. They may be the most misunderstood football club in Britain, but anyone who's ever been associated with Wimbledon hasn't got a single bad word to say about them. Frankly, never, never ever know, because there's a lot of humility, a lot of passion, a lot of commitment, a lot of love there. And I'm not being uh, patronising when I say that, because I know that feeling, because I managed it, enjoyed every moment of it. They were great times because there was a lot of characters there. We were coming from nowhere. We grew up together and uh, it was smashing. It was probably one of the most exciting times anybody could have in their life. I mean, I've had great times since, but if one sort of looks at it as a package of period of time and sort of learning and living, yes, it was smashing. And Wimbledon sure know how to have fun and succeed at the same time. At the David Lloyd Centre in Rains Park, a leisurely day was passed after a great cup winner, Everton in preparation for the visit of Liverpool in the league. The whole club seemed to be there, including 82-year-old chairman Stanley Reid and the owner Sam Hamal. Are you joining us for the workout? What? We're having a workout. Are you joining? Are you? No. Come on, boss. Well, I'll come and look at you. <laughs> I'll come and have a look at you. But Sam I missed you. I know. Bloody well I missed know. you. I can't say. Give me the word, Fash. Just give me the word. All the last bit of whatever race. What a race last bit. Well, Fash was too busy giving the word to the Sunday Times football correspondent, Tony Francis. Uh, one of my loves is music. Um, funnily enough, the only reason why I actually took up that directorship of uh, Kiss of Him because of Richard Branson. Yeah. Because he's uh, somebody who I admired for many, the many years. The entrepreneurial guy. Very sharp, one step ahead. Yeah. Always, always wins the David and Goliath situations, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. What yeah, a guess character. Yeah, to climb, hopefully climb down and pay him fortune. Fantastic. And this is what typifies the Wimbledon spirit. We are, we are the sort of the David and Goliath situation, time after time after time it comes. You know, and we're, so it really would have been ideal if we'd have had someone like Branson sponsoring Wimbledon, really. Yeah. His sense of humour and our sense of humour are very, very similar. John Fashionu is football's first player president. He runs three companies and presents television programmes, and he knows that couldn't have happened away from Wimbledon. If I had gone to Arsenal, yeah, I might have a few more trophies in the cabinet, but I certainly wouldn't have any money, that's for sure. Staying here at Wimbledon, they can't say at Arsenal, I wouldn't have built up the profile I particularly, and I don't like to particularly talking about myself because it would be nice to talk about the other boys, but uh, the, I wouldn't have been able to build up the profile which I've been able to do. I wouldn't be able to be doing my own television shows, doing gladiators, running radio stations, running companies, doing the things I've been doing. I wouldn't be sitting here in an apartment like this. I'd probably be sitting in the, the North Bank somewhere with two and six in my pocket, and that's no disrespect, but it's a different ball game, you know? You have to say well, what you want. I mean, I, we know and we, there's a lot of players out there who've got maybe 50, 60 England caps, but then they doesn't pay your mortgage. One man more than any other has created this enviable, relaxed atmosphere and unique spirit, and that's Lebanese businessman Sam Haman. He bought a controlling interest at Wimbledon in 1977, the year they were elected to the Football League. I, I wouldn't say it's exactly a democracy. It's more like a family. Everybody's in together and everybody's uh, chipping in in their, in their own way. We don't have any formalities and uh, I think uh, this is also very important for the Wimbledon psyche, meaning that we are special and we are unique and it's us in, against the rest of the world and that's absolutely essential for our well-being on the pitch. It must sometimes seem to Wimbledon they've no friends at all in the game. The headlines they make are rarely complimentary, but funnily enough this does seem to work in their favour. Oh, we love that. Yeah, we, that's what gives us our camaraderie. If they aren't knocking us, then they're knocking somebody else. We prefer them to knock us. You know, if you come back and you give us a, a whole uh, lot of abuse in the papers, wherever it be, on the television, whatever, that's great because we just go into ourselves, we've got the strength. 
Sam will put the, the, the family arm around us all and protect us. I mean, Sam and the chairman are two tremendous characters, and they both live and die for the club. The chairman's a, a one-off. I don't think there's another chairman like the chairman we've got uh, in, in all the leagues. He's a super character. He loves his football, and he's very proud to be chairman of Wimbledon Football Club, um, like everybody else is. We played one match, and we scored a goal, and everybody's jumping up on each other, and they look around, and Sam's in the, in the pile-up as well. You know, if we go out together, we go out clubbing wherever we'll be, Sam will come out as well. We've got the chairman. The chairman is, what, 82, I think? We'll go out to a nightclub, all the boys, when we're in Tenerife. We go out till, we get out, go out till 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. The chairman is still at the bar dancing with the boys. Vinny Jones, one of the original crazy gang, is in his second spell at the club now. And he, more than most, has benefited from the protection that Wimbledon gives its players. They won't be laughing when they see me start serving. I've been to a few clubs, obviously, and uh, played under some good managers. It's been very professional, and uh, if you like, we're professional here, but you get away with a lot more than you would at other clubs, you know. Ice! All the clubs I've been to, I think, more or less every one. I haven't, like, kept in with, like, mates with any of the players. Really close mates when you're there with them. When you actually leave, you know, you haven't got any, uh, you know, you find out they're not that close. And like when I left here, I was always, Ice! always go out to Wisey and and um, Fash. I've always kept close with them too. And uh, I think mean, at Chelsea, like say Andy Townsend, I've I've kept uh, you know quite close mates with. But you know all the others, you know not really. But here it's like uh, it's like you know like you're local really. This club is a hard working club, and everybody here pulls their weight. It's a very democratic club. Uh, we sit down and discuss things. Uh, we sit down and discuss things, i.e. as a group with the players. We talk about it, they're very hard working and uh, hopefully we'll continue to be successful. We want it's of um, leaping off the bench when Dave Besson created history by saving the first penalty in an FA Cup final at Wembley. And Don Howe pulling my shirt tails back, shouting, Gordy, Gordy, sit down. There's still a hell of a long way to go. I mean, to be fair, when we got to the final, if the if the truth was known, there was a couple of us had bets against us, and like there was a few three nils, three ones against us. You know, like tenors here, tenors there, and like there was, you know, that was part of the crack for us. Great, great deal of credit because they created it. Harry Bassett, Dave, Dario Grady helped them on the way. Don Howe and Bobby Gould turned the troubled teenager into a football club, and it's still gone from strength to strength. That's right, and along the way, Wimbledon have sold almost £11 million worth of talent, yet, contrary to popular belief, they don't have to sell to survive. We've never, ever had to sell anybody. We only sell when we are ready to sell. But it is a fact that some sale must take place every now and then to, to, to balance the books. But we've never had our back against the wall where we had to sell this week or this month or this year. We're always relaxed about that. And we sell when we have replacements for those we sold. And when it comes to finding those replacements, there's no shortage of advice from former managers for what Sam Hammam calls the team of the century. We had Bobby Gould on the telephone the other week saying, you know, how are you doing at the moment? I think it'd be best if you buy this player or do this, this. He's still talking like he's the manager. We brought Ray Hartford home from Blackburn on um, last week, Saturday, and Ray's still talking like he's the manager. You know, you speak to Don Howe, he's the manager. We've got five managers. Dave Bassett calling me up, telling me, what's Jonesy doing? Give him a kick up the bum. And I just hope and pray that that club goes from strength to strength because it enables every football club throughout the world, throughout the world, to try and epitomise what Wimbledon have done and uh, that's just like Cinderella. Match day and a ritual in St John's Wood before every Wimbledon home game, the ceremonial cleaning of the only red boots in the country. It started off as a bet. Um, I gave him a challenge that if he scored some goals, I would then clean his boots. The trouble is, it started off like that, 20 goals in the season, so I was virtually doing all the cleaning of the boots every week. It then got developed then into superstition. I had to clean the boots for, for him, otherwise he'd be ringing me up saying, why aren't my boots cleaned? It's just a superstition that went on from there. So this season he's now started to score again. So I've got the job back. I'm cleaning the boots once again. 
I've known that mace for 17 years and you still can't clean my boots properly, you know that? Fashion whose broken hand, courtesy of Everton's Martin Keown, didn't stop him reminiscing about what boot cleaning does for your character. Hey, it's part and parcel of it. Martin Peters, I had to clean his boots. Martin Chivers. Even Kevin Reeves. What, Norwich? Mm, at Norwich, yeah. And they never scored either. This is the one for today. This is the one. The bars are ringing up this morning. No, he didn't actually. Funny to say that, because he normally gives a call when we're playing him in the evening. He hasn't called me or anything. Because well, it would probably be you two captains, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, right, of course. Barnes is a captain. Been captain for two games, hasn't he? Well done, Barnesy, yeah. <laughs> captain the Reds. About time, too. Yeah. Fashionu waits patiently to cross Vauxhall Bridge, and for the past 18 months, he's been doing this journey to Selhurst Park because Wimbledon now ground share with Crystal Palace. The Taylor report following Hillsborough meant they had no option but to leave their spiritual home of Plough Lane, where the capacity was to be restricted to just 900. So at Selhurst Park, they live side by side with the Eagles. Yeah, it can be confusing, but for the moment at least, Sam Hammam is convinced it does have its advantages. Any improvements that will be made at Selhurst, then anything new will not be borne by Wimbledon Football Club, but by Crystal Palace. And therefore we are the only club out of the 92 clubs in, in, in the whole league, if you want, who doesn't have to pay a penny um, to improve their grounds. And that is giving us some advantage over most uh, other clubs. But in an ideal uh, world, we would like, and we're working very hard, if we can, to get back to our borough, but uh, there are problems. Wimbledon averaged the smallest gates in the Premier League, so serving the Dons is somewhat easier than Palace. Only 30 meals are needed for the restaurant. With Wimbledon, unfortunately, it's, uh, it's practically, you know, Oh, I wouldn't like to say it's not even a third. We, 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 don't, we don't do anywhere near as much as what we do with Palace. They'll have to change the back four. Got to, aren't they? I mean, you know what makes me laugh, mate? They see one game, they're having a bad time this season. Everybody wants to jump on them. All right, they had a bad result against Bolton. You know, nobody said that Bolton played well, and they would do well. They always Liverpool played badly. That's right. You know, you get that. That's the good thing about the Cup. The FA Cup, you get the, the minnows, the small teams, coming forward and beating the... It's a David and Goliath situation. Well, you do, that first goal. Yeah. You know, there was yeah. a challenge, I mean... Mind you, mate, so look at that little guy who's running around like a madman for Bolton. I mean, he was unbelievable. I bet he doesn't yeah. do that every week. If he did that every week, he'd be playing in the Premier League, that's for sure. I mean, it's unbelievable. You don't expect to play against someone like that. That's but that's their cup final, isn't it? That's it. That's it. Do you put my boots in? Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> show with Andy Gray the other day. Yeah. Yesterday. And saying the last thing Liverpool wants after that defeat is to have to go to Wimbledon. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. And Andy knows, yeah. <laughs> Andy knows. I bet they wish they had someone like Andy out there at the moment. <laughs> you know, the, the good thing about the, the Andy is Andy knows when they were talking about, I think it was, it was a referee, Neil Midgley, I think it was, who was saying that I'd clash with um, Kevin Moran. So that I did it deliberately. The good thing about Andy, I looked at Andy, Andy didn't say a thing, because he knows in his time he used to put it around more than anybody. <laughs> so he knows, I always know he's on my side. Andy, different class. Different class. I'll back you all the way, Andy. <laughs> I don't think the actual ground sharing, it doesn't, we don't have any problems with other fans or anything about it. The only problem we have is when you've got your away game against the home team and we're stuck in a little pen in the back and you sort of think, well, look at all those facilities we're missing out on. Is it easier for Plow Lane or here? Oh, here. Much easier for me, anyway. But I'd rather be at Wimbledon, though, any day. Why? Why? Hi, Mum. Because uh, it's Wimbledon. It hasn't got an identity here. It's just Palace, isn't it? Well, we don't like it here. We hate it here because it's nothing like Plow Lane. It's a totally different atmosphere. It's, like, too big. No one ever goes in the seats. All it is is like all the away fans down one end and all us like down the other end and there's no one in the middle, so we hate it. Do you think it's increased competition between the two clubs? Between us and Palace? Well, we've always hated Palace, so it doesn't really make much difference. 
I love him, basically. Yeah, he's great. Because he scores loads of goals for us. He's big, he's black, and he leads the Don's attack. What else can we say? Flash. I love him. <laughs> Absolutely love him. Love him. about him? He's a gentleman. Whatever they may say about him. He's a gentleman. Really? Truly. <laughs> When we started to get a blast off, I think it was Anfield away, and we beat them 2-1. So then it's something, oh, we'll get a blast off, bomb, we've got to have it every game. You know, and we get it nicked every now and then, like 200 pounds a time. But whereas before, I used to have to bowl the batteries, the tapes, the CD, and the whatever. Now the club have adopted that, and they actually buy it. So it's, it's part of, as you say, it's part of women now. It's part of, uh, you know, it's part of the kit. Well, you haven't got the, the, the financial power to be able to go out and buy John Barnes or go out and buy Ian Wright or Dean Saunders, the best players in this country. You know, we haven't got that financial muscle to be able to do that. So you've got to get a little bit extra out of the boys. So when you, you've got to know the music, everybody suddenly looks around, everybody's more relaxed. Wimbledon ran out knowing a rare double was on the cards, having already beaten Liverpool 3-2 at Anfield. But, John, what about those red boots? I'm not running around there like a plonker wearing red boots for the sake of it. You know, you wear red boots because the sponsorship was good and it was something different and I wanted to do that. Of course you're going to be a target, you know? I'm six foot two and I'm black and I put myself around a little bit. So I'm going to be a target the same as other players are going to be a target. Vinnie Jones is six foot two, he's white and has a skinhead haircut and generally uh, thought about as a bit of a tough guy. So he's going to get stick. But that's part and parcel of it. We certainly don't mind that. Well, Vinny wasn't going to get any stick this time. He was serving a two-match suspension. All right, son. All right. Meet the other John. All right, Barnes. You have a good game, son. Mr. Barnes. There you are, Mr. John Barnes. There you go. Give it a toss. Ah. Give it a shout, John. Heads. Tails. Tail heads, please. What are you having? We'll take out. The chain's round, so it's your kick. Nursing that injured hand, Fashionu certainly came off worst in the opening salvo. But then, against the run of play, Steve Cottrell got free of the Danish international defender Picnic, and the Dons won a penalty. Mace was right, Fash's boot did the rest. And short of taking the penalty himself, Sam Hamam was, as ever, as near as it's humanly possible to be to the action. And just before half-time, the Dons could have killed it off. Cup final hero Laurie Sanchez had a great chance, but a good save from Liverpool goalkeeper David James. Into the second half, James again saving Liverpool after a fine run by Clark. <laughs> Laurie Sanchez almost made amends for that first half miss with a glancing header onto the bar, and then Fash bashed, or was a complete gentleman, depending upon your point of view. Another defensive mix-up almost allows Steve Cottrell to make it 2-0. But a few minutes later, he did get onto the score sheet, and it finished 2-0 to Wimbledon. They're still in the bottom three, but the future does look reasonably bright, whether at Selhurst Park or anywhere else, 
Sam Hammam has a four-point plan for success. Our number one aim is uh, to continue to be uh, financially viable, and uh, our second most aim is to hopefully try to reach some conclusion on hopefully to try to go back uh, to our borough. And our third priority is to hopefully stay in the Premier League. And our fourth priority is to uh, win the FA Cup, which we're still uh, participating in. We're really under pressure down here, all this and that, eh? That's the old champagne, isn't it? Life's a bit. I don't know how we're going to cope with it down here. Is that a double over, Liverpool? Come on, lads. Here we are. Great. Absolutely brilliant. Come on. Here we are again. Happy as can be. All the pals and jolly good company. Never mind the weather.